La Basilica is situated on one of Quito's northern hills and is one of the city's most monumental buildings. It's also one of Quito's earliest religious buildings. Its construction began in 1892 and 100 years later it was consecrated by the Pope. The tradition of medieval glass painting was used for the basilica's large colorful windows. The basilica is an architectural symbol of an autocratic Catholic church which dominated the country until the liberal revolution of 1925. Steep and narrow steps lead downhill to the Centro Historico. The former Inca city became a splendid yet strict religious settlement of the main religious orders. The historic center of this Ecuador's capital city was built on the ruins of an Inca city. On the 6th of December 1536, Quito became re-established. When Spanish conquistador Sebastián de Banalcazar invaded, the Incas, under Rumana Hui, destroyed their settlement, so everything had to be rebuilt. The Plaza Grande, the heart of the old town, originated at that time, and it was in this square that the country's history unfolded, from its foundation right up until its independence. A Spanish colonial city and Baroque gem. The Catedral Metropolitana is situated at the opposite side of the square. The complex is the result of various building epochs. It has a long and dramatic history. Its interior is decorated with numerous paintings and carvings. One of its treasures is the statue of the Cristo Muerto, created by the famous Indian woodcarver Caspicara and in an adjoining altar room are the remains of General Sucre. Following various earthquakes, the church was rebuilt in larger and larger proportions. Close by, within a side alley, is the Museo Mena Camaño. In 1810, the leaders of the independence movement were imprisoned here in subterranean dungeons. They are now depicted in wax. In the Calle Garcia Moreno that begins in the Plaza Grande is the entrance to El Sagrario, the former sacrament chapel of the cathedral. Gilded carvings shine out in every corner. The city boasts a very popular attraction, El Teleferico, the highest located rat railway in South America. From here, the view is overwhelming. When the Spaniards conquered the Inca realm, various Catholic orders emerged. So the Jesuit order built the Baroque Church of La Campania de Jesus that is known as the greatest house of God in Latin America. San Francisco Square, that includes a monastery of the same name, has, since the arrival of the Spaniards, been one of the city's three main meeting places and is situated above the Plaza Grande. It was here that the Franciscan friars first settled. In an adjoining museum, larger-than-life figures depict stories from the Bible. During festival processions, they're carried through the city. Above the walls of the ancient Inca Palace originated the largest historic building complex in South America that still exists today. Around 20 kilometers north of Quito is the Mitad del Mundo, the center of the world. Here, in 1736, the exact location of the equator was established and the circumference of the Earth calculated. 
Next to the center of the world, there's an open-air museum which has been modeled on an ancient Indian village. Returning to the city, we visit the tiny Plaza del Teatro that was once a slaughterhouse and marketplace. In 1887, the neoclassical Teatro Sucre was inaugurated. The city's most beautiful theater, where the splendor and elegance of various festivals take place within its noble halls. The Augustine Order also has a monastery in Quito. Preciously decorated paneled ceilings adorn both church and monastery. And the large green inner courtyard is equipped with a central fountain. The ancient town of Quito, with all its alleys, buildings, courtyards and particularly churches, is a gem of colonial architecture. A restored building complex of the former Hospital de San Juan today contains the Museo de la Cuidad with over 6,000 square meters of exhibition rooms that extend across two floors. Visitors are provided with a fascinating impression of past colonial splendor. Next to the museum is the Calle de la Ronda, the city's oldest street. Subtly hiding the secrets of what lies within, these beautiful old houses with balconies and inner courtyards and wooden stairs are tightly packed together. A performance by the Bare Indio Humanizate demonstrates the spirit of the city's original inhabitants and the country's large variety of regions, all united by the Andes. Dance, music and clothing are strongly influenced by Peru as it served as the foundation of the former Inca realm. Both melancholy and pride are on full display here. Between Parachilo Hill and the extremities of Pinchincha Mountain is the San Diego Monastery, once a sacred hacienda of the Franciscans. Situated outside the old town, it was a place of contemplation and atonement. It was subsequently transformed into a monastery with a church, four inner courtyards and a cemetery. A huge iron statue of the winged Virgin of Quito, the symbol of the city, is situated upon the El Panachilo volcano that seems to protect the old town. The town once belonged to the Vice Kingdom of New Granada until finally in 1822, General José Sucre succeeded the Spaniards who were loyal to the crown. There is a large statue of General Sucre and a stone cross in front of the main entrance. But it's the white church tower that mostly attracts the eye. Next, the monumental monastery complex of the Dominican order Santo Domingo. The gorgeously equipped Capilla Virgin del Rosario is well known. It's situated to one side of the main altar and was donated by Emperor Carl V. The Santa Catalina nunnery still possesses the atmosphere of bygone times. The former capital of the Northern Inca realm became the most Spanish city of the New World. And today, churches, monasteries and squares continue to gleam in all of their colonial splendor. The remarkable legacy of a rich and dramatic past.